Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us. Today's webinar is Driving Higher Performance with Hydrobur 1K Waterborne True Hybrid Acrylics Polyurethane Technology, and is presented by Ivonic. Your presenter today is Sudhir Anantachar. Sudhir is a technical manager of coatings at Ivonic Corporation. He earned his master's degree in chemistry from Polytechnic University in Brooklyn, New York, and has over 20 years of formulation and application development experience with epoxy curing agents, industrial and architectural coatings, radiation curable coatings, and inks. Sudhir holds several patents in epoxy curing agents and radiation curable coatings. My name is Abby Pirro with UL, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Please send us your questions by typing them in the question box located on your screen. Our panelists will answer them at the end of the presentation. We are recording today's event and we'll send you a link by email when it has been posted to oprospector.com. Now, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Sudhir. Would you like to begin? Yes, welcome to the hybrid or polymer dispersions presentation. Today, we will be talking about urethane acrylic hybrids for one component coding applications. Avonic hybrid or products, which are urethane acrylic dispersions, they address the coding, several of the trends in the coatings market. Basically, the three important coding trends that we see is the productivity, the performance, and the environment. The environment-friendly waterborne liquid coatings is witnessing a compelling upward trend in the past decade environmental initiatives to reduce carbon dioxide emissions and to reduce the VOC from the coating formulations are gaining a noticeable upward trend over the past decade. There are several regulations and policies which are adopted by the various governments across the globe has resulted in the waterborne uh, solutions to set its uh, foothold and it's, we see that it's, it's growing as a viable option, to, especially to address the VOC and the emission reduction using the less hazardous components in the polymers and provide a sustainable environmental protection. The hybrid products also address two other important coding trends, which are productivity and performance. Under the productivity, faster return to service time, worry-free application, uh, reduced downtime and simplified maintenance and ease of handling. And on the performance pillar, the hybrid products provide outstanding UV durability, provide excellent scratching mold resistance, and it has adhesion to various substrates, including the metal, the composites, and other plastics. And it also offers outstanding corrosion protection as well as some pretty good chemical resistance. Hybridors are basically a proprietary avonic technology. These are the advanced hybrid acrylics, polyurethane technology. They are one component systems, uh, waterborne, and they are basically isocyanate free and uh, very low VOC. They can be formulated to very low VOC. So thermoplastic polyurethanes are well known there for excellent balance of mechanical toughness and the chemical resistance and the polyurethane, especially the solvent bond uh, polyurethane versions, requires very high levels of VOC formulate. The water bond polyurethane dispersions, on the other hand, they require significantly uh, less VOC for very popular for a variety of coatings applications, including wood, like leather, uh, metal, uh, concrete. Uh, and even on the composites, right? The superior, the physical and mechanical properties of the polyurethanes or polyurethane dispersions are attributed to a combination of their molecular structure, and it has that hard soft domain morphology, which is basically responsible for the superior performance. Unfortunately, one of the main disadvantage of the aliphatic polyurethane dispersions is the relatively high cost. As a result, uh, the formulators have uh, sought to reduce the cost by blending the polyurethane dispersions with an acrylic polymer emulsion that typically costs less than one half that of a standard aliphatic polyurethane dispersions. Although the acrylics reduce the system cost, the negative aspect of that is to it also reduces the overall performance of the binder. 
The one possible reason for this behavior is at the molecular level, the acrylic polymers are not as soluble in the polyurethane polymers. Therefore, the polymers remain phase separated during the film formation, which is partly responsible for the diminished performance of polyurethane acrylic prolines. In order to take advantage of the potential cost reduction afforded by the acrylics and maintain a greater share of the polyurethane dispersion properties, hybrid, hybrid or acrylic urethane dispersions are developed. The hybridors incorporate both urethane as well as the acrylic polymers in the same dispersion. The hybridors are synthesized by first by forming a, a polyurethane prepolymer and acrylic monomers are added to the prepolymer and the mixture is dispersed in the water. And once the mixtures are dispersed in the water and urethane acrylic polymerizations are completed concurrently and it results in a, a very homogeneous dispersions of the acrylic polyurethanes. The glass transition temperature of the hybridors as measured by the, the DMA, it actually shows one broad peak when compared to the two distinct peaks for the acrylic and urethane blends. The single, the glass transition peak that we get for the hybridors is consistent with the interpenetrating network structure uh, these polymers are known for. In the next slide, we demonstrate the coding properties, such as the water, the wear and abrasion resistance, chemical resistance and adhesion, uh, long-term outdoor exposure uh, and cost in use benefit versus typical polyurethane dispersion. This is using a prediction from the rule of mixtures. Here on the x-axis is a composition of a one-to-one -one blend of the acrylic and polyurethane, the blends, and uh, the typical coding properties such as the wear, abrasion resistance, chemical resistance, adhesion were measured and they're compared to that of the predicted by a linear rule of uh, mixture. These blends and the hybrid, hybrids, which are hybridors, they contain the equal amount of uh, same urethane and acrylic polymers. The phase morphology of the hybridor polymers are responsible for providing a superior performance when compared to the blend, and that performance is almost uh, similar to the polyurethane dispersions. We demonstrate this further comparing uh, hybrid or properties versus polyurethane dispersions and acrylic polymers, right? So in terms of flexibility, adhesion, hardness, chemical resistance, and durability, hybridors are incompatible, that the performance properties are uh, comparable to a conventional polyurethane dispersions. The biggest advantage of the hybridors are the polyurethane dispersions are very expensive, they're very high in cost, and acrylics, even though they are low in the cost, they do not perform the same, provide the same performance properties compared to the polyurethane dispersions, but the hybridors fall right in there. It does provide all the performance properties of the polyurethane dispersion at a much lower cost. So the hybrid or polymer dispersion provides a cost-effective alternate solution to polyurethane dispersions without sacrificing performance. So we further demonstrate this aspect the polyurethane by, by measuring the MEK double rubs of an acrylic, 50% blend of an acrylic and a polyurethane dispersion, a polyurethane dispersion itself and, and the hybridors. We tested the coding properties over cold rolled steel with a zinc phosphate treatment. The clear coatings were applied using number 60 wire one rod and allowed to dry for seven days at 25 degrees and at 50% humidity. MEK double rubs tests were then conducted. And what we see here is the hybrid or polymer dispersions provide a similar solvent resistance as a polyurethane dispersions. And the MEK double rubs are significantly better than a conventional acrylic as well as a blend of a, an acrylic and a polyurethane dispersion. So the reason for this is to, it does provide a high degree of coalescence with the interpenetrating network. It leads to the good film integrity and the good film integrity leads to a longer durability as indicated by the solvent resistance uh, uh, test. Avonic basically offers four hybrid products. 
We have 500 series, which are Hybridor 570 and Hybridor 580. And this contains uh, NMP, about 6% NMP in both Hybridor 570 and 580. And 870 and 878 are NMP free acrylic urethane polymer dispersions. The 580 is and 878 are harder polymers, and 570 and 870 are softer polymers. Hybridor 580 is recommended for wood or hard plastic applications. They are compliant with put contact or regulations 21 CFR 175 105. So is Hybrid 878. Hybrid 878 is also compliant with 175, 105, and they are also recommended for wood, hard plastic, and metal and concrete applications. Hybrid 570, which is a softer polymer, which is recommended for metal and concrete applications. 870, which is NMP, NMP free, they can be used on the flexible substrates, metal and concrete. And 870 is also compliant with FDS 21 CFR 175 105 uh, regulations. The hybridors polymer dispersions, these are the typical properties. They are typically somewhere between the for the 570 and 580, there's 40 to 42 percent solids. The 870 and 871 are somewhere between 35 to 41 percent in solids. And they are both uh, colloidal in terms of the particle size. And the particle charge is anionic, and they do not have these polymers do not have any surfactants in them. So with a, with a pH of somewhere between 7.5 and 9, and 570 and 580 because those are the NMP versions. They are 150 grams per liter VOC, and 870 and 878 are just 11 grams grams per liter VOC. There are six percent NMP in. 570 and 580, and Hybridor 870 and 878 is basically an MP free. So Hybridor polymer, this is some of the typical properties. So there's, it's got very good film formation properties. Hybridor 870 has a minimum film formation temperature of about 25, which is a much softer polymer. 878 are harder. And the glass transition temperature for 570 and 580 is negative 35 to 35. For 580 is negative 35 to 100. Hybrid 870 is negative 40 to 23. And 878 is negative 40 to 100. They offer outstanding impact resistance. And if you look at the impact resistance of all the hybrid polymers, they offer greater than 185 of impact resistance and also provide outstanding MEK double resistance as I showed before. Outstanding MEK double is greater than 200 MEK double rep resistance. And they got excellent elongation. For example, 570 and 580 has elongation of 200%, 580 is 120%, uh, 870 is about 250%. Uh, so these polymers are very robust, have excellent flexibility, provides outstanding impact resistance, both the reverse and the direct impact resistance, and, and outstanding solid resistance. The next few slides, we will look into the various applications for the polymer dispersion. For the metal applications, hybrids are typically used on the storage tanks, uh, the water towers, they are used on the bridges, rail cars, metal buildings, structural steelwork, pipes, and commercial architectural applications. Hybrid or polymer dispersion for wood applications, they can be formulated into very high gloss, matte and clear formulations. They can be formulated into pigment coatings. They are used on uh, various applications, including parquet flooring, Furniture, window frames, trim and siding, and hybridors are also typically used on the basketball courts. You see that shiny basketball courts, so those are typically formulated with hybrid 580 products. On the hybrid polymer dispersions are also used for the plastic application, for the transportation coatings, interior automotive soft peel coatings, and all the plastic components, and they're also used to coat computer housing. Now on the concrete side, hybridors are usually used as the industrial sealers, primers, and top goods for concrete. They are used as a glaze coat over the epoxy primer, can also be top coated over an epoxy primer on the concrete. So these are the, some of the applications for hybridors in, in the concrete and the civil engineering uh, area. Next, we will look into formulating with hybrid or polymer dispersions and uh, how to formulate with this hybrid one component acrylic urethane dispersions. Hybridors 
the key points are they are anionically stabilized product. So typically they do have very high surface tension and the product itself does not have any surfactant in it. So in order to reduce surface tension, we must add some kind of a surfactant for wetting and film formation. For most properties to develop, we need a, a highly coalesced system. In the next few slides, we will look into different coalescing solvents mm -hmm. that can be used with the hybridus. We must add sufficient co-solvent to get the good coalescence. Appropriate choice of the co-solvent is also very critical. The choice of additives is very important. Almost all additives, if it's not formulated properly, detract from the performance. And so we recommend the number of additives for formulating with hybridus. And as long as those additives are used, it minimizes this negative effects of uh, detracting the performance of the hybrid or polymer dispersions. Formulating with hybridus, here is an example of a gloss white coating of 50 grams per liter VOC. Formulating with hybridus is fairly easy. We typically do a, a resin-free grind. And in, in the resin-free grind, it's basically a pigment dispersion like ZS plus 100 and the combination of the ZS plus 170 and a deformer and water and a TIO2 is dispersed to a Hegman grind of seven, the temperature not to exceed about 60 degrees centigrade. And then blend, add the following into separate clean container under mild agit agitation. So we blend the coalescing solvent in this case is Devonol TPNB, Surfenol 8001 surfactant, another coalescing agent called Optifilm 400 from Eastman, another deformer and a wetting agent. So the surfactant, a deformer, a wetting agent, followed by the two coalescing agents. These are premixed and they are added to the hybrid or H70 and the polymer and the pigment dispersion is directly added to that mixture with agitation. So it's fairly easy to formulate. And if it is required, you know, we can add some rheology modifiers to get the, the rheology desired. And we do recommend certain rheology, rheology modifiers in, in, in the next few slides. So this gloss white coating typically is about 54% in weight solids, about 40% in volume solids with a viscosity of about 500 centipoise with a pigment volume concentration of 22.6% and 46 grams VOC. And we tested the coating properties of this formulation over uh, cold rolled steel with a zinc phosphate treatment. Uh, coatings were applied using number 60 wire one drawdown bars and allowed to dry at 25 degrees at 50% uh, relativity humidity for seven days. And they offer on the application properties, we measured both wet and dry adhesion. They provide an outstanding rating of 5A, which is the highest you can get using the test with a gloss of about 77. Again, they provide outstanding impact resistance. Uh, this formulation has an impact, direct and direct impact resistance of 160 or higher. And outstanding MEK double drop resistance gives a, a rub resistance of greater than 160. And with a alcohol, just a little bit less, it still gives you about 60 MEK double rubs. Hybrids are also typically used as a direct metal coating for in the direct metal coating formulations. In this case, we do use a zinc phosphate, Icofos ZBZ anti corrosive pigment with a titanium dioxide. Uh, this is also a resin free pigment grind. Uh, ZS plus 3200 uh, this dispersed in water to get a Hegman grind of uh, less than seven, and temperature must run around 60 degrees. Again, the, the formulating is fairly simple as, as the previous one. Uh, you blend the uh, ammonium benzoate, which is a flash first inhibitor, the coalescing solvent which is DPNB and texanol ester alcohol with a, a surfactant here. So the, the pigment dispersion is let down into a mixture of hybridor and, and this for uh, component here, which is basically benzoate, DPNB, ester alcohol, and later you add a polyurethane uh, thickener to get, get, the, get the viscosity and rheology properties to the coating. And we tested this in several applications. We, we did the humidity resistance. This is the Cleveland humidity test. ASTM D22-47 for 1,000 hours at 37 degrees, 100% relative humidity, and it passed with no blisters. And we also did a salt spray performance after 500 hours. You can see the picture here is typically as no rust or uh, the great no rust here, 
and it's got a, a both scrape creep and flea bristling of a rating of a 10 over 10, which is the, the best rating you can get and absolutely no blisters either in the field or on the creep. Again, outstanding uh, adhesion properties, both the wet and dry adhesion uh, gives a rating of 5A with a greater impact resistance is again above 160 with an excellent uh, rubber, rubber resistance of greater than 200. So these properties, the coatings were applied again on the cordial steel with a zinc phosphate treatment, bond rate 952. And in this case, we actually, these are the spray applications of the coatings were sprayed for the corrosion resistance as well as the humidity resistance. And they were dried and the dry film thickness here is about 1.8 months. So hybridors, they, they do offer outstanding corrosion protection and they can be used as part of direct metal coating uh, formulations. The coalescing solvents and the solvent recommendations are key. So the hybridors 570 and 580, 570 is a softer polymer, 580 is a harder polymer. We recommend a one-to-one -one blend of a hydrophobic and hydrophilic coalescing solvents. Hybrid 570, which is a softer polymer, requires about five to eight percent based upon the polymer solids, and hybrid 580 requires about 10 to 15 percent of the coalescing solvent. So one-to-one -one blend, we have some primary recommendations, which are basically Texanol and TPM you can also DPNB with TPM, a combination of the Texanol, DPNB with TPM. In this case, you can just use the DPNB as a coalescing agent. And if you need to extend the open time of the coating on the hydrophilic side, you can replace some of the TPM with the propylene glycol to extend the open time of your coating. So we also note the evaporation rates per sheet for all the solvent options here. And the key here is to do a one-to-one -one blend of a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic mixture, and they provide outstanding coalescence for both 570 and 580. For the hybrid 870 and 878, which are NMP-free versions, they do require a little bit more of coalescing solvents. They require about, for 870, which is a softer polymer, require about 8 to 10% on the polymer solids, and hybrid 878 requires about 30 to 17% of the, of the polymer solids. Again, we find that the, a combination of texanol ester alcohol with a combination of the TPM, DPNB with a combination of the TPM, a combination of the texanol, DPNB, and TPM, there are, these are all primary recommendations are here, and there are certain secondary recommendations. We, we do have primary and secondary recommendations here because depending upon the availability of solvents on the different regions of the world, these things are formulated. Again, we can use the propylene glycol for to increase the open time in combination of the TPM if the longer open time is desired. In the next few slides, I'll go through the frequently asked questions for the hybridors. How do we slow down the hybridors uh, fast dry? They are extremely fast dry coatings. So the slow evaporating solvents and the high boiling solvent blends will slow the drying time of the hybridor coatings. So a combination of TPM with the propylene glycol, using a methyl carbidol with the texanol, the TPNB solvent and, and, and the DPM solvents are known to slow down the drying time of hybridor coatings. Deformers plays an important role, both in while making the coating as well as applying the coating to, to a substrate. The best practice to pre-dissolve the deformers and other additives into your solvent and add the mixture slowly, along with the strong agitation to the hybrid polymer dispersions. The safenol DF58 and MD20, both can be used as a grind deformers as well as the letdown def deformers. Foremaster VF can be also be used as a, a grind deformer, and DFO PA4 is also can be used as a grind deformer, but it, it requires a lot of agitation to make sure that there are no craters or pinholes in your coding formulations. Surfenols are much more forgiving compared to a traditional mineral oil-based deformers, as well as some of the silicon-based based deformers. So if you use either a mineral oil deformer or the silicon deformers, like this d 4 pi 4 is, you certainly require a fairly good amount of agitation to make sure that you don't have that uh, cratering on the pinholes in your, in your coding formulation. 
surfactants, as, as mentioned before, hybrids are anionically stabilized and they do not have any surfactants in the, in the polymer dispersion itself. So they are very high surface tension in order to reduce the surface tension to eliminate the surface wetting as well as the film formation. We recommend a combination of Safinol 465 with a combination of aerosol OT75 surfactant, the sulfosuccinate surfactant, and also Safinol 440. So these surfactants, when used somewhere between 0.25 to 1%, will significantly lower the surface tension, enable excellent film appearance as well as wetting. It basically eliminates all kinds of surface defects from happening, and we do recommend Safinol 465 aerosol OD75 and uh, surfenol 440. How do I incorporate uh, uh, pigments into the hybrid formulations? Basically, hybridors are compatible with the most resin-free pigment dispersions. And Xerospers 3800 and surfenol CD171 are the preferred dispersions. Some of the, the resin-based pigment dispersions are also compatible, but you need to formulate it and, and test the performance properties to make sure that if it a resin-based pigment dispersion, it does not detract for you from the, from the other properties of the hybrid or itself. Especially the, the ZSPOS 3800 and Surfenol CD175-1 does provide outstanding pigment dispersions, so we do recommend Let's put 3800 and Cephanol CD 171 as a pigment dispersing aid. So formulating is again key. Uh, some of the questions we do get is um, when I prepare a coating formulation, I do see some seeding or graininess in the mixture and in the drawdowns. How do I prevent this? So one of the ways is to add your solvents at a much slower rate. Solvent and additive, additive mixtures should always be added and it's slowly under under strong agitation. We do, as I shown in the in the in the formulating tips in the formulation for hybrid 870 and for the and also the direct metal coating formulations. We do pre blend the the coalescing solvents with, with additives, and then hybrid is added to the hybrid followed by the pigment dispersion is added into that mixture. So as long as you follow that procedure, you should not see any graininess in the mixture uh, or in or on the dry downs. Polyurethane dispersions, rheology modifiers, Acrosol, uh, RM102020, and RM8W, those are made by Dow in a combination of 10 to 1 ratio. Acrosol RM825 and SCT275 are the rheology modifiers that are most compatible with, with the hybrid or polymer dispersions. They do take about, once you add the polymer rheology modifiers into your coding formulation, the property development usually takes about uh, somewhere between eight to 10 hours for the rheology modifiers to completely do the job and, and, and provide the rheology that you're looking for. So carefully, it, it does not require more, probably somewhere between 0.5 to 1% of these rheology modifiers is more than sufficient and to provide you a good rheology and, and flowability to the coating. So these are basically urethane dispersion that uh, use urethane rheology modifiers, and they work very effectively with hybrid or polymer dispersions. So in summary, we have four hybrid or polymer dispersions for the current market, hybrid or 570, hybrid or 580. Hybrid or 570 is a softer polymer. Hybrid or 580 is a harder polymer. Hybrid or 870 and 878 are NMP, the uh, acrylic in dispersions and, and they do provide outstanding film properties as well as mechanical and chemical resistance properties. The reason that is the hybridors provide an interpenetrating network kind of morphology, which we showed uh, by that actually has one broad peak on the front when you measure the glass transition temperature and they're using the DMA. So the IPN structure of the hybridors is the result of the, the chemical composition and, and the way we, we, we polymerize it. So this morphology is apparently is responsible for the outstanding physical and mechanical properties that you get with, uh, with, with this hybrid or uh, performance polymers. With that, I would open it up to any questions that you may have and try to answer those. Okay, everyone, as we now move into the Q&A portion of this webinar, please remember to put your questions in the question box located on your screen and we will get started. 
So our first question is, are hybrids available globally? Yeah, hybrids are available in all parts of the world. They are globally available, they're globally registered. Okay, great. Our next question, what are the global registration status of these polymer dispersions? Hybrids are registered globally and it's all on all the major inventories, uh, the task, uh, the the DSL, it's on the reach, uh, it's on the China inventory, Korea, Japan, and other major inventories, which are all, all major global inventories. Okay, our next question. Do you recommend a coalescent for these formulations? Yes, the coalescence, because of the glass transition temperature of these polymers are so high, you know, we do have two softer polymers, 570 and 870 but they do still require a good deal of about uh, five to 10% of the coalescing solvents for uh, softer polymers, about eight to 13% for the harder polymers is required to provide a, an efficient film formation for these coatings. Okay, great. Our next question, can I use this for elastomeric roof formulations? Yes, because of this very high elongations that these polymers provide, I showed you, I think, uh, Hybrid rates, uh, 570 and, and, and 870, they offer greater than 150% elongation. It should be should be suitable, uh, but we haven't tested in elastomeric uh, roofing applications for, for, for the, the, these polymers. Wonderful. Okay, our next question. Why is this showing the TG value as a range when it is an absolute value? So that depends upon the, the, the morphology of the product. It's, it's, even though it's, it's, it's polymerized together, you still have two different uh, domains in, in the polymer mixture. That's why you see a, a broad range instead of one number. That's also, that's the typical of uh, any polymers with a interpenetrating network type of uh, morphology. Okay, great. Our next question, can hybridor be combined with water-based isocyanides? No, these are single component systems. They do film formation by coalescence. I don't think they're compatible with waterborne isocyanate. You probably don't need an waterborne isocyanate to get the properties. Uh, I don't know the purpose of providing the waterborne isocyanate, but it is, it is not required, actually. Okay, great. Our next question. Why would you use two different dispersing agents in antifilms? Typically, the, these dispersants, depending upon the level and, and the structure of those dispersants, these dispersants are used. It's, it's, it's a lot of experimentation to find which of the dispersants provide the best grind the shorter amount of time. So those are the, a lot of the experiments that was done when formulating to figure out the optimal level of dispersants. In, in, in this case, the, that's what we found that using a, use of two dispersants uh, which actually provides a much better pigment dispersion than just using just one. And usually the, the deformers, there are the two kinds of deformers, right? So there is a, a grind deformer, which basically takes care of the any foam that is generated due to the shear of uh, uh, shearing uh, that comes with uh, dispersing the pigment. And that needs to be taken care and also during the application. So this application, deformers are the ones that once it is applied using a, a spray gun the, the amount of time it takes to pop up pop down those little bubbles you know they require a different kind of chemistry than the than the grind deformers right so typically the grind deformers are what used to be a mineral oil based deformers and the letdown deformers which basically takes care of the bubbles that the foam that happens during the application they're either enhanced with a, a little bit of silicon or silicon type of chemistry combined with, with the mineral oil based chemistry or other other chemistries. That's why there are two different type of uh, deformers in the formulation. Okay, great. Our next question. Can I do metallic formulations using aluminum pigment with this system? Yeah, the metallic formulations, as long as you take precautions to prevent that hydrogen from bubbling up when you put it, especially with aluminum pigments. Uh, it, it can be formulated into metallic uh, coatings. You have to make sure that the, 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 the aluminum pigments uh, doesn't create the, the hydrogen buildup within your, within your system. So as long as it's, it's, it's avoided, you can, you can use hybridos to form metallic coatings. Okay, great. Our next question. Are the hydrobrider shear stable during manufacturing? 
Yeah, they are very shear stable. So you some formulators actually do disperse the pigments directly into the hybridors as long as you, you maintain the temperature less than 60 degrees and it is, you know, uh, with, with a cooling jacket around your, your equipment, you should be able to disperse some of the inorganic pigments in the like titanium dioxides and some of the iron oxides and, and those type of pigments into the hybridors. But if you are using an organic pigment like the thalassine and blues and, and, and other reds, you won't be able to use, you were able to use the hybridors to grind those organic pigments. So as far as you're, you're using a easily dispersible inorganic pigments, you can add some hybridors into your, into the mixture and, 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 and disperse some of these pigments into that. Okay, our next question. For the DTM coating, can gloss levels be significantly increased with effective corrosion resistance? The gloss level is a, a function of you know, the, the PVC. You have to reduce the uh, amount of PVC. I think the formulation we showed is about 23% PVC. If you reduce that PVC to about 16 and start using a, a softer polymer like 570 or 870, you should be able to get somewhere, I would say, a, a semi-gloss type of semi-gloss, but somewhere the gloss when as measured on a 20 degree angle, you should get about 60 to 65. Do you recommend these for use in automotive coatings? Uh, automotive coatings, as long as it is soft bill coatings on, on the plastic components, yes, we do recommend for those kind of applications. We, however, do, do not, I don't think they are used for, for exterior automotive coatings. They can, you can also formulate a, a primer out of the hybridors for, for protecting the metal uh, against rusting, but we do not, it, it is, it has not been used for exterior automotive applications and we don't recommend it. Okay, our next question. How many PUDs are available in the market that can be combined with acrylic emulsion to receive results? Can we blend hybridor with acrylic emulsions? Yes, there is a, a, a separate presentations of uh, the various acrylics that we have blended with the hybridors to reduce its cost further down. We can send you send that uh, presentation on request. So there are a number of acrylic emulsions that we have blended and formulated further with hybridors, and there is a, a specific presentation available. Uh, we can send that to you. And and the number of polyurethane dispersions in the market there are, I would say there are more than fifty to seventy five different kinds of polyurethane dispersions available globally from different suppliers. Okay, great. Our next question. How do you formulate zero VOC formulations according to EU regulations? Zero VOC formulations, you have to, we haven't tried to formulate a zero VOC with, with the hybridors because it does require a little bit of the coalescing solvents to get the film formation going. The best one we have formulated so far is a 50 grams per liter VOC using a surfactant which also acts as a coalescing aid, which is a ADO1 surfactant. If you can use the surfactant and formulate with hybridors, there's a, there's a good possibility that you can take it to zero, we will see, but it, it, it depends upon the final performance properties. It requires a little bit more formulation, but, but it, it, it still requires some coalescence. Probably you have to look into some of the coalescing solvents, which are not considered as, as, as VOCs. So for that application, just to finish that thought process, there are, so if the, your best starting point uh, would be to start with hybrid or 870 if you're aiming for a zero or near zero VOC formulation. So the next question is, can I use Texanol and PG only? No, Texanol and PG, PG is basically used for open time. You know, it, it doesn't really provide the coalescence. We have used uh, Texanol with DPNB combination or DPM combination, but we haven't used the Texanol itself. But you can, with, with the hybrid 570 and A580, we have used just the DPNB. Okay, our next question. At what stage do I add the defoamer? The defoamers are basically the grind defoamers. The grind defoamers are added. Well, when you making the resin-free pigment concentrate, you add to the water, you add your pigment dispersant, and once you add the pigment dispersant, it is followed by the addition of the pigments. And once the start pigments start mixing, you get a, a little bit movement in your mixer, 
at that point you add the, the deformer to take care of the any of the the foam generated from that shearing okay our next question uh you mentioned that hybrid or polymers are used for automotive interior coatings why are they not used for exterior coatings can you just brush on why they're not ex used for exterior coatings again for the exterior coatings the the, the durability and also we haven't seen people using a, an acrylic urethane dispersions for exterior coatings basically because of the performance requirements are much higher and the, the coating has to last to the entire the life of an automotive thing. I don't think this technology is, is suitable for those, those kind of applications. Next question, can I add all of the additives together at the beginning instead of adding them in slowly? No, you, you have to follow additives uh, in a sequential basis uh, as shown in the starting point formulations in order to avoid the shocking and the surface defects, which results in the graininess and, and also the seeding of the coating. So it has to be added in the way it is uh, described in, in our starting point formulations. For example, if you add the water and the first step will be to, to reduce the surface tension of the water, you had to add a surfactant into it. And once the surfactant is added, uh, the surface tension of the water typically goes down and then at that point, you add the pigment to it. So you have the better chance of wetting the, the pigment particles with the surfactant present rather than adding all that at the end or at the beginning. Okay, our next question. Can you comment on the freeze-thaw ability and shelf life of hybrider? Yeah, freeze-thaw stability, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're good for five to eight cycles. And the shelf life is typically, I think, is between 18 to 24 months. Okay, great. Our next question. You note DTM on CRS, but you still use Bondurite 952. Does this always need a treatment or a primer? It actually, no. Actually, it doesn't require a treatment to that. You can use the hybrid DTM on, on cold rolled steel, uh, hot rolled steel, uh, you know, and also the aluminum substrates uh, without any chromate treatment on those uh, on the aluminum you can use other steels so what we showed is formulating examples and hybridos does get used on on different kinds of steels like hot roll cold roll steel and aluminum substrates all the time they are being used in, in the commercial architectural applications where these type of steels are typical and it doesn't act actually require a pre-treatment like the bond right 952. Our next question, uh, can you use extra crosslinkers for these polymers? Yes, there are the recommended crosslinkers to get a, the crosslinkers typically provide much higher crosslink density. And there are several crosslinkers that we do recommend. There is a recommendation for the crosslinkers that we can send it to you. Okay, our next question. How about the adhesion on galvanized steel for hybrid 870 as a direct to metal coating? The galvanized steel. Yeah, I don't know whether galvanized steels are getting a surface prep or it gets a blasted or it is it is applied on its own. It's typically because the ad adhesion on most metal surfaces with hybridus is, is pretty good, and I expect it to be uh, with, with it should have a very good addition to the galvanized steel. Our next question: Does it adhere to low energy polyethens? Yes, hybridus are used for. Low surface energies like the vinyls. You typically see those things. People use hybridos as a war print on the vinyls in the outdoor uh, advertisement, the vinyl advertisement panels, right? So those are typically very low surface energy because of the amount of plasticizers that these vinyls have. So I do expect as long as you try to match the surface tension of the hybrid or coatings with uh, closer to the surface energy of the substrate you are trying to coat, you should get fairly good adhesion with hybrid ores. Okay, this will be our last question of today. How can we get samples to test? The samples are available. The sample center, just send as a request to um, we will we'll ship the samples out as soon as possible. Okay, thank you all for attending today's webinar. Just as a reminder, we will send you the link for the recording of today's webinar so you can watch it at any time and share with others at your company. We will also follow up to any questions we weren't able to get to today. Thank you again for attending and have a great day. Thank you very much.